Do you want to go ahead and get started? I will. Good morning, everyone. If you're just joining us, can you make sure to put yourselves on mute? Um, we have a lot of people in our cafe this morning. Um, we're talking about, I keep getting it mixed up, brick to click or click to brick. At this point, uh, everything changes at, at a moment's notice, but uh, welcome everybody. Um, parent cafes are a great way to connect with different people in our district to ask questions on a variety of topics. And so we'll, we'll kick off today with a welcome from your superintendent, Sharonica Harden-Bartley. Good morning, everyone. It's um, good to see you. Thank you for your patience and your support as we um, get to the final stretch of a lot of planning and begin to execute our plans. We have um, remained committed to having a reentry plan that is one safe, um, two gradual, and three kind. Um, we do believe that our plan represents those components, and we also feel that um, we have probably one of the best plans in our region. So I'm very proud of the work that the team has done. Um, I take no credit for it. We have an amazing team working daily to um, put things in place. So we're at the point now of laying out what those options will look like for your children. Um, we've had several uh, Zoom calls up until this point. So today we really wanna spend time talking about what that academic day will look like, what that week will look like, um, some resources that we have for you and just ways that we are going to embrace this new opportunity. I'm going to stop calling it a challenge because that has a negative connotation. So we're going to look at this as an opportunity to do some amazing things for our young people and for our community in the midst of a global pandemic. So I want to um, turn it over to our CNI team. Um, we have several district staff members who are on the call. Um, they all have been working um, tirelessly. Someone said to me the other day, well, how was summer break? There was no break. Um, we have not stopped working since actually over spring break is when we started um, really having conversations when we were thinking about closing school back in March. So this team has not stopped. Um, we've had a few pauses, um, but there's been no breaks. We've been working tirelessly to support you and to support your, your children. So I'm going to turn it over to the CNI team, but thank you for joining us. If you have questions, um, we will have questions and answer, um, you can put those in the chat. Um, and we have a smaller number, we're not in a webinar format. So um, it, the best way to manage those questions is for you to type them in the chat so that we can keep a record of them and um, make sure that we're going back to respond to anything that needs additional follow-up. And I love seeing little people on the call, Kelsey. <laughs> Turn it over to CNI. Thank you, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday today. Happy Tuesday. We are so excited to have this conversation. Yes. And like Dr. Harden Bartley said, go vote today. Today is a big day. Nancy, do you mind sharing your screen, please? And if you could put it in present mode, thank you. So again, uh, we are excited to have this conversation today. Uh, my name is Ian Buchanan. I have the honor and privilege and wonderful responsibility to serve as the Assistant Soup of Curriculum and Instruction. And before we get started, I really just wanna do a couple things. First, um, I think we can all agree and we might have to do some kind of virtual clap or some kind of virtual hoorah but uh, I want to give credit to uh, a fearless leader. Uh, Sharonka Harden Barley has had to carry an extensive load, and uh, she is not one for praise, but anybody that knows her knows that she's student centered. Uh, she is leading this work with compassion, with grace, with professionalism, and with a thoroughness that a lot of superintendents do not do. So, the first thing that I want to do is publicly acknowledge her. And if you know how to use this chat feature, you can give her a clap, you can give her a thumbs up or you can put it in the chat because she has been a leader extraordinaire and I'm proud to walk alongside her. Um, the second thing that I really wanna do is acknowledge the CNI team because this team has put in some work. When you think about the, the responsibility of um, 2,600 students and two to a couple hundred staff members, it is an awesome responsibility. 
Um, and it's an awesome privilege that we have. So I want to publicly acknowledge all of the CNI team. Definitely want to give a shout out to the administrators in the district who have been carving this plan out, especially those school leaders and our teachers and all other staff that have really been working hard. And then the final thing I want to do is families just thank you. Thank you for being our partners. Thank you for walking alongside us. Thank you for uh, holding us accountable. Thank you for being our checks and balances. Thank you for being our sounding board. So I just wanted to do those things before we kick this conversation off. Nancy, you can go to the second slide, please. And so in everything that we do, so, so last year our theme was heart of the lion. This year our theme is health of a lion because we're very clear that uh, we as a build, as a district, we need to be uh, a counterbalance to some of the stress and some of the strain that's going on outside in the, in the real world. And so our primary focus is making sure that we focus on the health and well-being of our students, our staff, and parents while primarily focusing on the academic piece. And actually not primary because the two go hand in hand. So again, our focus is on health and wellness first amid a global pandemic, understanding that we still have a job to do, and that is to ensure that your students get the best educational experience possible. Next slide, please. And again, like Dr. Harden mentioned, really our focus as we enter uh, this new space, August 24th, is to make sure that we're safe, to make sure that we're not um, um, reactive, and we want to be very thoughtful, and so that's why we have gradual steps especially understanding that the world outside of us is very unpredictable. And then kindness is, is what we do. Uh, we believe in kindness. We believe in empathy. We believe in grace. We believe in compassion. And so that is a, a through line that you will see uh, as, a part of our, as a part of our district's kind of mantra. Next uh, slide, please. So what I want to do is take probably around 15 minutes or so to talk through some of these questions. Well, Ian, where did these questions come from? These are some of the primary questions that families have been asking us. And so what we wanted to do is take a big picture, kind of broad perspective around the work in order to fill in some gaps. And we do understand that in this hour that we have, all of the gaps may not be filled, all of your questions may not be answered today, but we do have several other opportunities for questions to be answered, for gaps to be filled, for you to feel super comfortable that starting August 24th, that your child will receive the high quality education that he or she deserves. So I wanna talk through these questions real quick. First, I wanna talk about our vision for the Brick Academy. Starting what? I don't mind going back up to the next, pre what is it that we want um, uh, a student uh, to have, to be, to be able to do? Uh, then we wanna talk about instruction. So we really wanna focus on a couple of things. We want you to understand that we will have live and recorded teaching. Of course, our work is all aligned to state standards and remote learning standards. Teaching in the remote space is very different than teaching in a traditional classroom. We want you to know that our teachers and our students will be receiving instruction and learning in ways that are aligned to best practice. Our instruction will focus on the core, the English, the math, the social studies, the science, and the electives. And obviously, we have to focus on social emotional learning and restorative practices. We will provide regular assessments, whether they're formal or informal, whether they're what we call formative, which is uh, uh, progress checks along the way, or whether they're summative, meaning we've taught a specific content, let's see what you've learned holistically. And then we also have assessments that are diagnostic, meaning that we really want to know where a student is at this point in time in English, math, science, social studies. And so a diagnostic test, just like you would do at a doctor, allows us to get a physical of where a student is. Once we have that physical, we can quote unquote prescribe um, interventions. And then the last piece of instruction is that we will still be supporting your children. We will provide intentional supports, whether they're academic, social, emotional, we provide enrichments and all kinds of interventions. So just thinking about instruction, this is one of the reasons that we're so excited uh, to be able to continue to serve because we know that 
uh, that our teachers are going to knock it out of the park and we know your kids will. The other piece, we'll kind of talk very broadly around the highlights of each of the schedules. And I actually should, it should be uh, pre-K as well. So we talk about pre-K, elementary, middle, and high. Talk a little bit about how students will be assessed. We'll talk about how parents can be, how parents will be supported and how you can also support your students. And then we'll talk a little bit about how teachers have been prepared to knock it out of the park August 24th. We can go to the next slide. So I'm going to have uh, Ms. Susan Hill to talk a little bit about the portrait of a graduate. I'm very excited and proud of the work that she's done and quarterback in this effort. Uh, so Mrs. Hill, you, you got the floor. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to be here this morning. My name is Susan Hill and I have the honor to serve as the director of pre-K through 12 college and career readiness and access for the district. And um, this portrait of a graduate is something that we are all very proud of. It was developed by a very large number of stakeholders in the district, teachers, counselors, administrators, students who worked with our communications team to actually design the graphic that you see on this slide. We had parents, business leaders and uh, community leaders, nonprofit leaders, all have uh, input into developing what we call a portrait of a graduate. And these are our ultimate aspirations and our students' ultimate aspirations for what uh, the end goal is for their uh, secondary, their pre-K through 12 education and what skills and habits of mind that they take with them into their post-secondary education and their future careers. This portrait is aligned with the pillars of learning reimagined and also our district's strategic plan. And that alignment is actually reflected in the graphic that you see. Um, and if Nancy, if you would just go back to the portrait, there are four categories academically prepared, um, which involves literacy, numeracy, and then information and media literacy. Um, we mean um, literacy broadly as well. This includes scientific literacy, literacy in history and the social studies. Additionally, our students are innovative problem solvers. They are curious, creative, critical thinkers, and we wanna cultivate those skills. Uh, we also have students who are mindful of self and others. We want to nurture their persistence, their self-awareness, their uh, self-advocacy skills. We want to continue to nurture their empathy, their collaboration with others, and their engagement uh, with the community as um, active participants in their community. So those um, goals, these aspirations are continuing to inform our work as we pivot between a uh, click environment, virtual distance learning, and brick. And so these will continue to be our hopes and aspirations, and we will be planning with these aspirations in mind as we move forward. Thank you, Susan. And I just thought that that was important for families to understand. Um, again, this was a document that was created in collaboration with a number of stakeholders. And this is what this is our North Star for our kids. So we just wanted to make sure we shared that with families. And so before we jump into the question and answer, or before I jump into more of the conversation, again, just wanted to ground us in what's important for us as a district. And as you know, learning reimagine is at the center of everything that we do. How do we treat students, staff, families in humane ways and affirm their value? How do we make this educational experience fit like a fine tailored suit for every kid? How do we ensure that every kid has what he or she needs to reach his full potential? And then how do we help kids and teachers and ourselves engage with the world outside of the classroom? Especially at this time, we have so many opportunities to learn and to connect students to the world outside of the classroom, as we call it, connecting, connecting learning to life. And so the next piece as we move from left to right is just re learning reimagined again. And what you see in the middle of our, are our five priorities. First, we want high quality learning experiences. We believe in well-being and joy. We wanna make sure we have a top quality staff. 
we want to get collaboration with community and families, and then we want to make sure we have the resources to get the work done. And then finally, I want to move to the far right, which is really speaks to where we are currently. And when we think about the heart of what we do that is around learning reimagine, but as you see the concentric circles, what you see is how we wanted to start. We wanted to start ready to pivot. We wanted to make sure we had options for families. We wanted to listen to voices. We wanted to make decisions on facts and science, not on conjecture. And we wanted to be slow, cautious, and kind, all wrapped around an attention to racial equality and a focus on well-being. So this is who we are as a district, and we think it's important for families to know that. So let's jump into the nuts and bolts. So how will instruction look in this virtual learning environment, this distance, learn, distance learning environment? So we have our live instruction, which is called synchronous instruction. And this is where students and teachers are having a real live engagement. Communications happens in real time. There's an opportunity to build in more engagement and more communication and more feedback loops. And so this will happen primarily in the mornings uh, at the K-5, at the, actually at all levels. And so this is the real-time instruction. And then we also know that a kid cannot sit in front of a laptop all day, even though as adults, we've had to do that a lot. And so we also want to provide some flexibility. And we want to provide an opportunity for students to learn at their own pace. And so this speaks to the personalized aspect of the work that we do. So not only do we provide the live instruction, but we also provide what we call asynchronous or recorded instruction. And so this allows students to learn at different times. It's not live communication. And again, especially for families who need a little bit, of, bit more flexibility, this allows families and students to work at their own pace. So a combination of live and recorded instruction is embedded into the work. Next slide, Nancy. Thank you. And so again, like I mentioned before, uh, instruction in a virtual space is very different uh, than being in a traditional classroom. However, we don't, we don't lower the bar. And so we wanted to make sure that families knew that our work is guided by a set of international standards for technology and education. And so when we think about what kinds of activities we want students to engage in virtually, it's the same things that we want in a traditional classroom. And it is aligned directly to learning reimagined. We want creati creativity and innovation. We want kids to communicate and collaborate. We want them to research and gather information. We want them to be critical thinkers, of course, especially in this time. We want them to ensure that uh, they understand the rules of the digital world and digital, digital citizenship. We want to make sure that they are fluent when it comes to technology. So when we talk about deeper learning and we talk about what we want for our kids, all of our instruction is designed to build in these competencies. Next slide, please. In terms of, okay, if I'm a parent and I want to know what are the platforms or what are the ways that I can support in the classroom? Many of you are familiar with these um, platforms, you've had experience, but one of the things that we heard over the course of uh, March through May was that there was just too many platforms and too many clicks uh, for families and for kids. So we did try to streamline and we've narrowed down our resources to a couple primary resources. The first is Google Classroom, which also Google Meet is the communication um, media piece with that, and then also Zoom. So our primary um, kind of instructional engagement platforms will be through Google Classroom and Zoom, and access to any of the learning platforms can be uh, tapped into through ClassLink. And we'll talk more about how families can be empowered to be super great at Google Classroom, at Zoom, and then also knowing how to navigate ClassLink. And so we'll talk about that in just a minute. We have the principals on board today, um, but we're gonna talk about the highlights of the schedules really quickly. And so one of the things that I mentioned is that primarily at the tops of the morning will be more of the direct instruction, whether it's, uh, uh, synchronous or asynchronous, but we really want to try to pack that morning um, with engagement. And so as you see here with the K-5, 
9 to 11.30 with lunch breaks, lunch and breaks built in. Focus is on the core, STEM, arts, music, and physical activity. There's also a focus on wellness and connections, which is again a theme through all of our work. Dan, and so again, go to the next slide. No, 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 we're on pre-K. Oh, you said K-5, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I, that was my mistake, pre-K. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so this is pre-K. And so uh, again, you see here the way the structure is. So pretty much direct instruction, direct engagement with the teachers in the morning and the afternoon is more individual student work time, a uh, one-on-one -on -one support and small group instruction. Wednesday is no direct contact with uh, teachers and that is more recorded learning uh, and projects and activities that families will do independently. Now we're moving to K-5, thank you. Similar structure, um, direct instruction, and, and, and some of these times may change based on some work that we did yesterday, but pretty much similar structure. The primary part of the day is direct instruction, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. This includes the core classes, art, music, PE, those classes, a built-in lunch slash recess, and small group work. Um, in addition, there will be all kinds of supports provided to students, including reading support, support for our English language learners, our students who receive supports with special school district, and any other area as determined by student need. Again, this is about the personalization of supports for each of our students. Then the next piece is that independent work time. This is when students will be working at their own pace on projects, doing homework, reading, reflecting, and potentially engaging with uh, teachers via uh, email. And then Wednesday, similar to uh, the, the previous model, no student contact. And this is really exciting because unlike uh, other districts, we are super committed to STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And so Wednesdays gives our students an opportunity to really dive deep into some projects that will again connect life to learning and learning to life. So in addition to having STEM projects, there will also be uh, learning activities that folks might, that uh, students may need to complete, and there could potentially be some online assessments that students will take individually. And I did see the question pop up in the chat and we'll get to those. So two more schedules. And if you take a look at Brittany Wood's schedule, this is just a sample schedule. What you'll see here is pretty much a typical day. Uh, you'll see the advisory piece where we build community. You'll see areas where there is tiered support for students. You'll see the core classes. Uh, and you'll see uh, opportunities for projects. And then there's another piece that provides an opportunity for either students or families to engage, or parents to engage with teachers during our teacher office hours. Um, as a note, families, we will provide detailed schedule information to you following this conversation, but I wanted to provide broad pieces today, um, and then we can also follow up. Final schedule, please. So this is the, uh, and again, I want to congratulate and thank all of the thoughtful work that has gone into this planning because uh, principals and their support teams, their leadership teams, have done a he heck of a job to try to build out um, schedules that fit the needs of individual students and particular student groups. And so the high school was really thoughtful around the way that they provide tiered support for students. They do understand that students have different needs and they've categor um, categorized or sorted those needs into what they call academies. And so you have the Black Academy, you have the Black Academy that is two days of directed learning and three days of student directed learning. You have the Gold Academy and then you have the Lion Academy. And each of these academies were, so you might ask, how are students placed in an academy? And so, as you see with the block on the right, the black block, um, one criteria was how students were engaged during the fourth quarter. So we want to get those students to be reconnected and re-engaged. And then we looked at a several data sets. Galileo is a benchmark assessment that allows us to access a student's learning at a point in time. Reading inventory also lets us know exactly where our kids are with their reading levels. Alex is a mathematics program that allows us to build from where a student is 
and build their capacity in a self-paced uh, manner. Then we also looked at grades and feedback. So very thoughtful plan using several different criteria to determine how students will be placed, all built around the best ways to support our students. You can go ahead. So uh, the next piece is, so how will students be assessed? So I just want to talk about a couple of these assessments. So first, obviously, um, we will have what we call content specific formative tests. Again, formative tests are basically designed to say, we've provided some instruction, let's see if that instruction stuck. If it didn't, what do we do, need to do next in order to best support the, the child? The summative is saying, okay, we've spent four weeks on a unit or on an activity, how did students do overall? So you'll definitely have those formative and summative assessments across the board, just, have, just as we were doing a brick space Fast bridge, I mentioned that before. I don't know if I mentioned that, but fast bridge is what we call a diagnostic tool and a progress monitoring tool. So what does that mean? That means first we do a physical, an academic physical. We determine where a student is, then we develop a path to help that student fill in any gaps that he or she might have. And along the way we do what we call progress monitoring, which means we check the progress. Galileo is a, is a dipstick, so to speak. It allows us to determine where a kid um, is performing at a specific time. And then Alex, again, is a self-paced, what we call a prescriptive tool, which allows a kid to uh, build his own capacity or her own capacity at their own pace. So one student's Alex path might be different than another, depending on where they start. So this is pretty much um, what assessments will look like all along the way. We're also doing reading inventories to ensure that um, our students' reading capacity has grown. I want to step back for just one second to talk about something that we call the COVID slide. And what the research has said is that students will have a tremendous amount of academic loss, specifically in literacy and mathematics. And so we recognize that. And so that's why starting off the year outside of building relationships is super important that we do a physical an academic physical of where our kids are so we can best fit their needs. So parents, how might you support during this distance learning period. And again, we will equip parents with all of the supports they need to navigate this. Um, as a dad myself, I do understand that some of this can be overwhelming, but we want to eat the elephant one bite at a time. So we're here to walk in lockstep with you to make sure that you feel comfortable. And so how can you support? Got to know your child's login information. We'll help you with that if you need help. You should know how to access learning applications through ClassLink. Um, there's a host of uh, resources on our website. We are here to make sure you know who to connect to for specific help. Uh, and then we also would need you to have access to all of your students uh, and teachers' Google Classroom pages and be ready to receive alerts and weekly reports. And then the final thing is our student information system. It's important that families check on a weekly basis to monitor student work habits and uh, be prepared to discuss any concerns with a teacher at your convenience. So again, these are some of the ways that families, parents can support a child. Again, we're here to walk you in lockstep along the way. And towards the end, we'll talk about some specific opportunities where we can be of support. And so, as we move to uh, the last couple of slides, I wanted to ensure families that when the virtual curtain raises on August 24th, our teachers and our principals and our support staff will be ready. How do I know that? I know that because we are well equipped and we will continue to um, strengthen our skills. We are ready to provide high quality virtual instruction. A couple of things that have guided our professional development uh, one is the ISTE standards or the International Society for Technology and Education. When we think about what our teachers, what competencies they should have, this circular graphic talks through that. 
The other piece is when we do professional development with teachers, we also talk about the various uses of technology. And so we wanna make sure that as we talk about technology, teachers are maximizing um, what technology has to offer us. And that graphic on the right speaks to that. In terms of specific activities around professional development, we have been doing PD since um, the middle of March. We understood that we were somewhat blindsided by the pandemic and we wanted to make sure that teachers had the training and the skills they needed. So that training started in mid-March and went through um, May, especially for our K-5 teachers, but that training has also been ongoing. Teachers have um, taken it upon themselves to participate in a number of professional learning opportunities and the district has provided some of those as well. I can give you a couple specific examples. I know a lot of parents are asking, so what does art look like in a virtual space? So our art team has been collaborating with COCA around professional development to make sure that our teachers are doing an excellent job. Another person might ask, so what does culturally responsive teaching look like in a virtual space? Approximately 40 of our teachers also went to professional development for Dr. Shiraki Holly around professional learning and around how to be a culturally responsive teacher in a virtual space. Our administrative have, administrators have had significant professional development. And then starting next week, we have what we call UCD Learns, which is an opportunity for our teachers to have both a common learning experience and then also a personalized professional development journey. And so again, we wanna make sure that our teachers have the muscle to do what it takes to provide a high quality um, virtual instruction or remote learning experience. And so our teachers, our staff, we're ready. And again, I just wanna emphasize this uh, instructional technology piece. ClassLink is the hub for the learning space and the learning applications. And so we just wanna make sure that families know that this is the place, this is the one of the one-stop shops for you to go to learn alongside your kid and to monitor your child's uh, growth. Couple last slides. Where do I find things? So if you wanna find information about um, digital learning and our resources, there's a link here and we will share this with you. It's a how-to um, guide for families. Next slide. Also, uh, as this is going to be um, relaunched in just a couple of weeks, here's a place that contains weekly assignments for all grade levels. You can access it to the COVID-19 button at the top of the district. I will also say that schools, individual schools may have some nuances in terms of this piece. So when the individual schools have their day in the life conversations with you, they'll talk more specifics around this. Next slide, please. And of course, community resources. Online, we have a, a host of community resources for families because we know that this time has been a challenge for all of us. And so we wanna make sure that we wrap supports around our families and our students. And one of those supports is our grab and go meal program, which will continue. Next slide, please. And again, speaking to the social emotional piece and the wellness piece, also online, we have um, a link we call the Peace Place, which provides all kinds of tools around wellness and well-being that students, teachers, other district staff, and families can use to support their wellness. And so the last slide is just uh, the CNI team. We are always here to provide supports for you. And as you see here, here's an outline of the team. I am super proud of the work that the team has done. And again, I wanna publicly thank them for carrying such a heavy load and being such awesome leaders. Uh, I want to make sure I did that. So if you have any specific questions, we're always here. And again, this deck will be shared with you. So that ends uh, this part of the conversation. And I do know that we have principals on the line, we have CNI on the line, we have the superintendent on the line as well. And so we will open it up for questions um, and we'll start with the chat. 
Hello, everybody. I'm just going through some of the questions we have so far. Uh, there was a comment from Dr. Lee um, and Kate Potch, who, who are the heads of the middle school. They had to hop off this meeting to go to another meeting, but they did want to stress that if anybody has any questions specific to the middle school, they, you are welcome to call or email them. So let's get started. First question, is there a teacher assigned for every grade who will be leading remote schooling on the days when kids are at home? This is once we actually return to the buildings. Bev, can you speak to that one? I'd be happy to. Good morning, everyone. My name is Beverly Vela. I'm one of the CNI members that Dr. Buchanan uh, referred to. And yes, we, at, once we return to the building, there will be teachers in every grade level. Um, our love and joy for your children is to surround you as much as we can with our teachers. And so whether that's in person or remotely, um, our goal is to work collaboratively to provide for your students. And a follow up, will elementary students be remote learning with the same teacher they will eventually be joining for in the classroom learning? You want me to take that one, Ian? Yeah, you go ahead and knock it out. Okay. So um, I'm not sure what level this is, so that's kind of dependent on the level. Um, for K-5, we are talking about using our grade level co like our grade level teachers, again, to surround so that there is a sense of community among the students as well as the teachers. Um, some of those details are still being worked out. And then at the upper level, you'll have, um, you know, multiple teachers based on the courses that your child is enrolled with. When will Brittany Wood students know the cohort and class selections? Nancy, I think there was an answer to that from Pouch, Dr. Pouch, a few, um, a few comments below that. And I know they're finalizing those numbers, as well as working with Mark um, around student family cohorts as well. So with and, um, I'm sorry, I'm on a, I'm, they actually um, sent an email. They will be planning a uh, parent Q&A for Brittany Woods families for Thursday. Um, the tentative time is 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. because we wanna be sure you have that before um, that date of Friday. Um, if, you, if parents need just a little more time until Monday to make that decision, we're happy to do that. But you will, um, you can expect to get an email for Brittany Woods families for a Q and A specific to Brittany um, with the administration. We, we, they just made that decision. And I am reading Kate's response here. She's hoping to be sharing cohorts within the next two weeks. Next question, will daily attendance take place for accountability of the students? If so, will the standards be posted? Mark, can you speak to the attendance piece? Uh, yeah, so attendance is something, hi, uh, good morning everyone. My name is Mark Basie. I'm the Director of Technology Solutions at the District. Um, so attendance um, is going to be taken uh, on, on, you know, when we're distance learning from home, uh, we will be looking at engagement of students. Um, the attendance rate is uh, done through a virtual uh, program with the state. Um, it's calculated at 94% of their attendance, uh, the attendance hours that we uh, can actually claim during that time. Um, it's not taken on a daily basis. We realize that there is some flexibility in attendance and, and engagement levels on the part of the students. Um, so that's something that we're still working through um, and how attendance is gonna be tracked um, throughout the year. So um, I, I don't know that it'll be taken on a daily basis, but we'll be working with uh, the state and uh, our teachers to make sure that students are engaged in the process and in the work that's involved in distance learning. There's a couple of questions in the next uh, comment. Um, one, can you confirm whether or not there will be substitutes right now on days when teachers have 100% virtual learning? Anyone? Um, if the question is, will we have district substitutes? Um, because we're in a, a virtual environment, our goal is to leverage existing staff within that building, which is why we're really working on 
consistency. There will be some um, building subs, but we have a challenge getting substitutes in a traditional setting prior to COVID. So our goal is again to leverage all the human resources that we have in our district and to make sure that there's some consistency across grade level, across buildings and levels so that um, we can leverage the human capital of the people that we have. We do believe that we have appropriate staffing so that the um, learning will continue, even if there is an absence. Sharonica, could you also answer part of this question? Um, has it been decided if teachers will be coming into the buildings if it is 100% virtual? It has not. Okay. And will I laptops be, replacement be available? Yes. Yes, we will definitely ensure that um, replacements are available. Mark, do they bring those to your office? Do they bring those to technology? Well, they will, you'll need to schedule a time to come in and replace those laptops. The best thing to do is to email um, our work order system and they will set up a time to, for you to come in. So that email address is just WO, which stands for work order. So WO at ucityschools.org. Uh, that just send any Chromebook issues to that email address and the guys on that team will take care of you. And we are preparing a kind of what is next for the start of school. We're giving you a lot of information. So we want you to have one document that has everything that you need to know about starting school, um, any supplies, technology, who to contact at your building. So that document is being created and will be sent out so that you don't have to scramble and remember all these emails and things like that. Um, so please expect that. Um, we assure you that your children will have everything that they need, including instructional supplies. We normally have a back to school um, rally actually today. Uh, today is the first Tuesday of the month and historically we've had National Night Out in collaboration with UCDPD. Obviously we're not having that this year. So we will still be giving out those um, supplies. Um, we still will be uh, working with immunizations if you need that. Um, we still will make sure that you have the technology that you need. And then you will be hearing soon from your principals if you haven't already. Um, many of them are trying to find ways to celebrate and um, enter our new students particularly those students that are transitioning, um, kindergartners, sec sixth graders, and then high schoolers um, to have some sort of celebration so that um, we can you know, really start this year on a high note, um, even though it is very, very different. So in the next couple of weeks, our first day of school is August 24th. We have new teachers um, starting today. Um, so they are in district um, picking up materials and things similar to as our students do. Um, they will have virtual PD. Next week, our teachers return, and so those schedules will be, you know, shared out, and you should hear some contact from um, your specific school. So we've thrown a lot at you over the last few months um, because it was necessary, but you, we will start to streamline that. Our website is being revamped so that it's more user-friendly um, so that you can just have an easy way to access all of this information. I have a difficult time keeping up with everything, and I, I'm in the district, so I know you as parents are feeling a bit overwhelmed and we want to support you um, in, in navigating all of this and very important information. Our next question is from the Flaunts family. Welcome back to the district. Will my students receive computers from the district or if not, can you tell me what computers they need in case I need to buy them? Especially they, will they will receive them from the district. Um, we have Chromebooks that we issue to all families. Um, we have issued them actually to all families K through 12. Um, our goal is to continue with that. Um, we are writing a grant to get some additional dollars to help with that if we do have a need. Right now we have inventory for enough. Um, one of our um, shortfalls is, is um, hotspots. So I always make a plea to families if you received a district hotspot and you no longer need it, we will um, happily take that back so that we can repurpose it for another family. Next question is, if or when a teacher contracts COVID due to them having to come into the buildings, while my child is safely learning from home, what services will be provided for my family due to the trauma we have being, we have being worried about our teacher and staffs? 
So this is something that I think from a social emotional perspective, we're all gonna have to work together. We have many resources for our families that we've actually um, leveraged this summer with teleconferencing, um, tele uh, counseling sessions. Um, we have resources from the American Association of Pediatrics that is on our website to help parents have conversations. Not only our students, some of our students navigating teachers who may become ill, there are also students who've lost relatives, um, even caregivers. So we understand the, the human element of the work, which is why the well being component is woven throughout our plan. So we will continue to support. Um, we have not landed on what the arrangement is for our staff yet, which is why I said that decision has not been made. I just answered the last question for everybody about dropping off on use hotspots. Well, we have an open slate. Does anybody else have some questions? Hi, I have a question if, if I may ask. Please do. Okay. Um, so my question is, it's uh, two parts. One, um, so when looking at your plan for um, the school day, I noticed that the, the school hours and the instruction will take place during the normal or typical school hours as if we were in the building. Um, my question is for uh, those families and students that may not necessarily be available during those times for whatever reason, the children may be at daycare or they may, with, they may be with a grandparent who is not quite tech savvy and don't know how to log on to children or for parents who may be working at home and just can't get their children logged in to the system for the classes, what type of plan or is there a plan in place to reach those particular families to ensure that those students aren't left behind? Right now, the primary mode of instruction is the typical, the typical day. That is the primary mode. We do understand that we need to differentiate. Um, this is the first time we've opened in an all virtual model. Um, we are exploring ways. Um, there are some teachers who've actually said, you know what, I'm willing to take an evening shift if I can adjust my hours. We're still figuring out um, those schedules. We're still finalizing registration. Um, parents are still making a choice between the launch option and the brick option, which is U City. But once we actually get numbers and feel like we have more concrete information, um, we will go to work on seeing how we can differentiate. We've also um, been in contact with many of our partners, including Washington University, area churches, um, other entities that want to help support. Um, there is a large district, St. Louis Public Schools is creating learning centers for families to come in. We are, are much smaller, but I am looking at their model and their concept to see how we can replicate something similar while being safe. Um, so I just ask that you bear with us. Um, we do have teachers that are also, you know, working and have children at home that they're going to be homeschooling. So we're just trying to be kind again in our plan. But I know that once we get numbers, once we know where students are and, you know, what our, our plan is going to be, I believe that from there we can differentiate and provide some options. It is not going to be a perfect scenario. I can't replicate everything that happens in the school day, in the evenings. I don't know if we would have the staffing to do that, but those are things that we are looking at. I've had two teachers who've already reached out who are very strong teachers who are saying, you know what, if you need that, I will be willing to take like a three to eight shift. Is that something we probably will do? Yes, we have not worked out all those details. We are starting with our traditional approach first, and then from there, we will quickly pivot, make adjustments, differentiate, with the constraints that we have with staffing and the constraints that we have financially, but we understand that that is something that we're going to have to consider so that we can truly meet um, the needs of all of our learners. So it's on our radar, um, front and center, and I promise that in the next couple of weeks, we should have more information to support you. We have a follow-up question about teachers possibly um, going to school to teach virtually. What plans do you have in place and what data is the district following to make the decisions that say it is safe to bring our teachers back when it is not for students? So the CDC's guidelines are around gathering. And so I wanna be very clear, we have not made a decision, but if we do gather, it would be within the six feet social distance. It would be adhering to the sanitation and cleaning uh, guidelines, the mask wearing, um, the random checks for temperature checks and, and screening. So all of the precautions 
that we have in place will be in place. We have staff that are already in buildings, um, so that those procedures would still be in place. But again, our plan is safe, it is gradual, and it is kind. I did want to point out that Mark Basie has put some information about um, emails, how to make sure you're on the right email system, um, and how to upload records, um, and those kind of things. Um, Sharnaka, did you want to speak to the fact that um, we've had several questions about having to, do you have to register for Brick Academy? No, um, you, you don't need to do anything. You automatically be enrolled in Brick and um, you will start to receive information from your school um, in a matter of days. Actually, principals will be getting communications out. Many of them have already been sending out communications, but if you have not received one yet, you will get one this week um, because we do need to um, start that communication. And so there's nothing that you need to do for the Brick Academy. Uh, we currently have no more questions. We have a few more minutes scheduled. If anybody would like to just chime in, uh, you could unmute yourself and ask a question. Hey, I wanted to, hi. I've asked a lot of questions, and so I apologize, but I'm a former reporter, and so I just always ask a lot of questions. Um, so, one of the things we're we're returning to the district we were here several years ago moved away have come back um one of the things that i had really appreciated from our previous experience was the differentiation in instruction and i know that everything was really rushed in the spring but one of the things i've heard from some of my friends was that um a lot of that did not happen during the spring um that a lot of the that it wasn't as challenging as it could be for kids who were, you know, more advanced. Um, what are some of the steps that you've taken to address that as we return in the fall? I think first, um, we, we've had time to plan. Um, we did not have time to plan. We left for spring break and we were on spring break and on that Sunday, the 15th, of March, I met with the county health department with other superintendents and we decided that we were not opening into, August, into April 3rd. So it was like a, a mad dash to put some things in place. I think that the ISTE standards that we have outlined, um, we've had professional learning around virtual instruction that our CNI team has been leading. Our CNI team is masterful at standards. Many of them are representatives for our state in helping to create assessments, helping to create and develop curriculum. Um, so we have used all of those lessons learned, honestly, the mistakes and areas where our plan was good. Don't get me wrong. We, we put together a really solid plan. I think the execution of it did not have the integrity that we need to have across the district. So our goal is um, consistency. It is heightened levels of support for teachers and having more clarity around what we expect. We gave a lot of grace. And honestly, in some ways, maybe we shouldn't have given as much grace. But now we will balance that grace with clarity, with our goal of humanizing, and making sure that we have rigor and that we are differentiating the experiences. And I think that the STEM work um, that Bev uh, Veloff is leading, um, there's some rich experiences for our young people. And I know that we will be much more attuned to those, um, those quality checks um, to make sure that the experience for our young people is similar across the buildings, between classrooms, um, because that's needed. And so we had some rock stars and some bright spots. And then we had some areas I was like, oh, we did that. So yes, we're not going to sugarcoat it. We, we know the areas where we needed to do better. And I feel that now this team is much more um, prepared to respond to not being in school. We simply were not prepared for that and we put the plane together as it was in the air. It's still in the air, but we are starting to land a little bit. We're coming down to, to land. And so um, I feel that it's gonna be a different experience. Will it be perfect? No. 
there will be some things that you will say, this isn't working. We hope you tell us that and give us the opportunity to make those mid-course corrections immediately as, as, as opposed to waiting until we finish a 12-week, 13, I forgot how many weeks, 13-week closure. And CNI team, if there are anything specific that you wanna share like with PD that would help give some assurances that this will be different than last spring. You can chime yes. in, please. So, so, so a couple of things, and anybody else can chime in as well, but a couple of things. I think we are very deliberate around our intervention structures this year. And so the intervention structures are not just for kids who might be struggling, but also for kids who need that intervention as well and need that enrichment as well. So that's one piece. We'll be very deliberate around saying, this kid has already got this. What does he or she need to go to the next level? I think that's one piece. And especially at the secondary levels, the project-based learning work that we're doing is going to be challenging for all of our students. And it's a way for students to personalize it and take it for their own. It's super exciting. I will also say just in terms of planning, uh, we have already developed what we call quarter at a glance documents. So we're very clear around what instruction should look like from day one all the way through the first quarter, including the activities that we do for kids who already have it and the kids who don't have it. So uh, like Dr. Harden alluded to, you know, we were sort of blindsided in March, but we've had a chance to kind of get our sea legs and do some extensive planning. So I feel like um, you, should, you should be um, uh, pleased with the work that's come, gonna come out. Oh, my pancakes. One more question. How best do we provide that in the moment feedback about what not, what's not working? Teacher, principal? The teacher would be the primary mode, but definitely the building leader. I mean, I think that we're at the point where um, because we're not able to check in and see kids in the morning and see moms and dads as they, as they drop kids off, those, um, that communication has to be immediate. I wouldn't wait. I mean, we, we always, always say we don't have, we have to have steel toed shoes. So it's not about stepping on people's toes. We need to do what's best for our kids. And, you know, leaders are across the organization. Our teachers are leaders. Our students are leaders. So if there is something that you feel can help your child, I would immediately reach out to the principal and that, that teach. We hope that you develop a rapport with that teacher so that those issues are addressed at the classroom level. But if they're not, absolutely the principal. If I have an issue with something I, and I can't get what I need at, at a certain level, I have no problem going up the chain. So with your children, you should not hesitate to do that as well. It's not being punitive, it's not being negative, it's to help us all be better. We've hit our hour mark. Uh, I hope this has been really informative. I think, uh, I, I think uh, everyone's questions have been answered. Ms. Johnson, um, the schools are having meetings, so you will hear from the elementary school. You have an elementary baby, right? Okay, so you will, I thought so. <laughs> so you will hear from um, the elementary principals. Many of them are on the call now. I know that I've seen communications from a few of the schools. So just expect to hear from them. I think that um, out in each building will we'll have a building kind of plan, not for in-person obviously, but that was the goal that they would have that in-person that in plan. Um, we will pivot that and then you will get information about just basic things regarding that specific school so you can expect more in the next week and a half um, from your building leader so be, so before we close out i just wanted to make sure that families are aware that there are a number of parent cafe activities that are going to continue over the course of the next few weeks there are grade level specific parent cafes. So if you wanna know what a day in the life is gonna look like for the elementary level, that parent cafe will be available. And also I wanted to make sure that you knew that Mark Basie, who is our director of technology services will also be providing some support around technology for families. And so that is also around the corner. And Ian, I did want to add, we are also in the process of planning a day in the life for pre-K as well. That's not on the parent cafe schedule right now. Um, and I, just to answer one more, uh, there was a question about, are the schools planning a virtual meeting for their families at the start of the school year? And indeed, the high school has already had one, um, but there are more to come, correct? 
Yes, I answered that already. <laughs> All right. Sorry. All right. I think we are set. Uh, many thank yous in the in the chat and thank you. And uh, by the way, my kids really enjoyed the opening song that was by Will I Am, just so you all know <laughs> for tonight. Okay. Hey, Jude. Jill, tell Jude I said hello. <laughs> I will. Thanks, Veronica. Bye.